Hello, this is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. In today's episode, I'm going to be going over three home studio soundproofing options. Now, this is not to get confused with acoustic treatment, which is what we usually talk about on this channel. We are going to be talking about isolation. So before we get started, it's important to understand that soundproofing and acoustic treatment are two different things. They are for sure related concepts, but the outcomes are completely different. Um, most of the time in their home studios, people are trying to achieve both of these goals at the same time. Um, however, there's some myths and misconceptions uh, that can prevent either from being achieved, uh, depending on the way you go about, about them. Um, so first, let's understand what soundproofing or sound isolation is in relation to acoustic treatment. So soundproofing or sound isolation refers to the process of preventing sound from leaving or entering a room or a space. Um, this can be done by sealing all the um, cracks or any air gaps, um, adding lots of acoustic insulation, adding a lot of mass and density in the walls. We're gonna get into all of the methods um, later on in the video, um, but that is soundproofing, otherwise known as sound isolation. Uh, this is to stop the transmission of sound from one room to another. Now, acoustic treatment refers to the process of improving the sound quality within the room. This is what we mainly do here at Sound Headquarters, which is acoustic treatment, such as acoustic panels, um, sound diffusers, bass traps, ceiling clouds, um, all of these types of products that we either custom built or that you can buy commercially. Um, these all aim to help improve the actual sound response within the room. Now, the misconception is that acoustic treatment is soundproofing, and that is not the case. The acoustic treatment for sure makes our sound sound better within our rooms, but this does not stop the sound from exiting the room at all, or stop any outside noise from entering the room. Um, so that's the biggest myth, and a lot of times people are trying to achieve both of these goals. Um, but they use one method or the other, and really it's a combination of both. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go through three options that you guys can use to actually sound isolate or to help reduce the amount of decibel level that is either entering your room or exiting your room. Um, this is most <clears throat> common, excuse me, in home studios because we get very loud and most times we do not live alone and we are disturbing others. Uh, whether it's too late or time-wise or if there's just sound sensitive things going on in other rooms if people have a home office and one person is working or on a conference call for example while someone else is trying to uh, practice drum lessons or play piano or something obviously those two things can clash um, or for example if you have a small child's bedroom um, and a music studio right next to it obviously those things aren't gonna sit well next to each other as well Right, so the very first option we're going to talk about, and this is something that's kind of overlooked. We, we see it very commonly overlooked in a lot of home studios. Um, the first option is weather stripping and sealing. So in almost every single home room that we have, our doors and our windows, they aren't rated for sound um, isolation, right? And most importantly is our interior grade doors. So all of our interior grade doors have no ceiling on the door jams. The bottom of the door is a massive air gap uh, between the bottom of the door and the floor. Um, so these are areas where a lot of the sound is just going to very easily escape. And just the process of getting something there to block out those gaps and to create more of an airtight seal, that will help reduce the amount of decibel level that is transmitting between room to room. So you can achieve this by using just stick on weather stripping. You can stick on weather stripping to your door jam, and then you can use a door sweep, which screws into the bottom of your door, and that will close the gap between the bottom of the floor and the bottom of the door. And then the weather stripping seals the gap around the entire perimeter of the door jam. I do have a video on my channel of me adding uh, sweeps and seals to an interior grade door. If you wanna check that out, you can see how we went about that. It's very simple, very inexpensive. Um, the weather stripping around $20, the door sweeps around $30. Um, this is in Canadian pricing, but the pricing should be very similar no matter where you are located. And 
very do-it-yourself friendly. This is the least intrusive and least expensive method just for adding a little bit of decibel reduction uh, room to room. Now, number two is this is the middle ground method and this is also commonly overlooked as well. Um, this is room choice and staging and positioning. And when I say staging and positioning, I'm referring to furniture choices and things like curtains, like drapes, um, things that would not necessarily be um, exactly looked at as acoustic treatment or soundproofing, but just normal things that would go into the staging of a room, like couches, beds, furniture, any of those types of things, um, and room choice. So for example, the choice of a room, it's very important inside of our house. Um, there's certain rooms that just naturally in the home's construction will be more sound isolated than others. Um, for example, any room that has an exterior wall, our exterior walls are almost always insulated. They are way more solid. They are rated um, at a higher degree, uh, meaning that they require more things to pass code. Um, and usually that means that it's more of a solid, more dense wall. And that means that it's more sound isolating, right? So a lot of the times we can choose between a, a room that has exterior walls versus rooms that have no exterior walls that are completely interior. And especially here in Canada, I'm sure it's similar elsewhere in the world. Um, interior rooms within a house, if they are non-load bearing, a lot of times they won't even have any insulation in them at all. It will just be hollow studs with drywall on both sides and this drywall will be thin. And this creates a very, very hollow um, cavity in the wall structure that just does not stop sound at all. And it is very annoying for people who are trying to solve this problem without doing the next method, which is construction. Um, so a lot of times we can choose a room within our house that is maybe not an ideal room size or maybe not an ideal room shape or maybe location wise is not best. But for example, the largest distance that you can get between your music room or where you are being loud and rooms where the sound is sensitive, such as bedrooms or um, a nursery or an office space. We want to get as much distance between these rooms as possible. Um, of course, this is a luxury for most people to be able to choose which room. Um, some of us have dual purpose rooms. Uh, me, myself here, I'm in my the living room of my apartment. You can see I have some panels up here um, and I also have my drum kit set up right behind me there. A lot of us do dual purpose, uh, just working with what we have, right? And that is of course okay, but we have to make sure that if you do have the option that you're aware of it and that the sound transmission will be greatly affected if we can get as much separation between the rooms that are most important in terms of sound isolation. Another thing to consider is rooms that have fewer windows and doors. Windows and doors are usually the weakest link in a construction structure in terms of sound isolation. Um, that is because, especially with interior doors, they're not rated for any sort of level of sound isolation. And they have big air gaps at the bottom and around the door jams. So the last method is construction. This is the most effective, but it's also the most intrusive and it's the most expensive method as well. Um, there's so many different construction techniques that can contribute to sound isolation. And achieving full sound isolation requires a combination of a lot of different materials and a lot of different methods, um, which for home applications can be, can get insanely expensive very quickly, which can be prohibitive uh, for people to complete a project like this, or it's just a timeline, or it's um, just access to tools and materials depending on where you are, or access to experienced workers. Um, there are a lot of roadblocks that go into achieving full isolation within a room. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can do, especially if you're handy. And even if you're not, if you have the budget for it, there's so many construction techniques that you can implement inside your rooms to greatly, greatly improve the sound isolation. So one of the most common questions that we get here at Sound Headquarters when people are reaching out to us for consulting about their, about their studio rooms or if they're interested in having me come out and do a build for them is, this is the most common question we get is, how much money to soundproof this room or how much money to soundproof a room that is this size? Um, and this, this is a difficult question to answer because 
There's so many different methods that we can go about. And I don't like giving people an insanely high quote um, when, or vice versa, or something that's too, too low uh, to meet their needs. The better question to ask is, what is the overall budget that you're willing to spend to isolate this room? Because once you have a set budget, then you can reverse engineer and work backwards uh, to determine which things are going to be the greatest value adders and which things are going to be most expensive um, time and um, cost ratio for actually isolating your room, right? For example, if someone only has three to $5,000 to isolate their room, um, we may be not doing uh, two layers of drywall, for example, or we may not be doing uh, full mass loaded vinyl, or there's there's so many other things that um, are either budget or time sensitive or just work or tool sensitive. Um, so the very first thing that I always suggest to people whenever they're going to actually go the route of construction and they're going to actually renovate a room in their house to be more isolated, the most important thing is identify what your budget is. Because if you're going into it uh, willy-nilly and you, you're, you don't know how much you want to spend, very, very quickly, you will be spending <laughs> thousands and thousands of dollars, and it might be a lot more than you were expecting to spend. So the first thing that I always suggest is identify your budget, and then we can work backwards, um, reverse engineering to get the most bang for your buck out of your budget. <clears throat> so <clears throat> once you've identified your budget, um, we can get into what the actual construction techniques are going to be. So especially if you're working with an interior grade wall, um, if these walls do not have any sound or acoustic insulation or any insulation at all in them for that matter, um, that would be the first step that I would suggest. The only problem with this is that the drywall needs to be removed to access the interior of the wall, right? So just removing drywall in itself has demo costs. Um, if you have to pay to dispose of your drywall, this is a lot of time, it's very messy. Um, but this is what it requires if we want to actually add insulation inside an interior wall where there is no insulation. So that's the first thing that I would suggest is adding acoustic insulation. Um, here in Canada, it's commonly used rock wool, either safe and sound or they have other options as well. Um, there are other types, there's so many different types of acoustic insulation that is out there depending on where you are regionally. But even just having normal pink insulation, that's just most common in all of our, at least North American construction here, um, even just adding that to an interior wall that does not have any insulation at all will be a great help um, in terms of sound isolation. Now, if you're at the point where you already have the drywall off and you have acoustic insulation inside your studs, now you can consider adding, before you add your drywall back on top, you can consider adding a layer of mass loaded vinyl. You can consider adding a great product, which is sauna pan, which we get here in Canada. Um, these are products to decouple and to add mass and barrier between the actual drywall structure and the stud structure. Um, so there's other things that we can do as well if you are adding sauna pan and or mass loaded vinyl. Before you hang your drywall, another option, instead of screwing your drywall directly into the studs, you can either use resilient channels or there are clips that perform even better than the resilient channel. Um, and basically what this is doing is this is decoupling the drywall structure from the actual stud structure. And not to get too complicated, but any resonances that are resonating the drywall structure, if the screws are screwed into the stud, then all of those resonances are resonating into the actual structure of the wall and of the house itself. And that will transmit room to room. If we decouple the drywall interior structure from the actual stud structure, then the drywall itself will resonate and then way less resonances will make it to the stud structure and that results in less decibels that are leaving the room or entering the room for that matter. Um, another choice with the drywall is to do two layers of drywall. Uh, this is an option that we've done for a lot of people's builds where maybe they already have acoustic insulation inside but they only have one layer of drywall. Um, something that we can do without needing to demo anything is just adding another layer of drywall on top of the existing drywall. Um, so this usually we can do two layers of five eighths. There's acoustic rated options. There's quiet rock. There's all kinds of different um, brand names and labels for these more acoustic 
um, sound controlling layers of drywall. But that's another thing that can help greatly. And another important step is that if you're adding two layers of drywall, to stagger your seams and to also mud and tape your first layer of drywall before you apply your second layer of drywall. We want to make sure that we're creating an airtight seal anytime we build a wall structure um, inside, of our, inside of our home. Um, there's other options here as well. They have solid core doors, so getting rid of those interior grade doors for a more solid core option. Another great option are the pre-hung exterior grade doors. These are doors that we've used in a lot of our builds or in vocal booth builds for people. Um, they're easy to install because they come pre-hung and they're already sealed on the entire jam and on the foot plate. Um, they just install into a standard size rough opening. You get to choose if you want 32, 34, 36 inch wide door for your room. And these are bang for the buck. It's not an inexpensive method, but you're, at, you're really tackling one of those weakest links, which is the door structure uh, within an interior room in a house. Um, that's a great option to help out for more sound isolation. Um, there's a lot of other things I can get into, but a lot of these options require a lot of resources, which can be prohibitive. But the main takeaway here from this video is that sound isolation, meaning sound proofing, making sure that as little sound transfers between room to room, that requires construction or renovation to be the most effective. This is the biggest myth misconception that we can just add soundproofing, that's acoustic treatment. If you wanna get actual sound isolation, this requires construction, building materials, time, resources, all of these things, right? It's very important to identify the overall budget and then work backwards to reverse engineer and get the most bang for your buck out of your home studio build. A great channel and resource to watch if you're planning on undertaking any of these renovations yourself or if you just wanna have an even deeper understanding of any of the topics that I talked about in this video here is Home Renovision TV. Uh, they've been a great resource. Uh, they're actually based out of Canada. Um, but they do a lot of so much very informative material for do-it-yourselfers, especially regarding home soundproofing. Great channel to watch. Home Renovision TV. Check them out. Let them know that Sound Headquarters sent you if you do check them out. And thank you so much for watching. Really hope this helped at all. Hope you got any sort of takeaways that are going to help you out with your own room at home. And please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if there's any things that you would suggest for your home studio or for others. Thanks for watching. This has been Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Peace out.